that Jesus said he's the only way to heaven. He's the only means of salvation that God has provided. She would object. Why would she object, Erwin? Well, what she would say is that this is absolutely too narrow. I was listening to a segment of one of her shows recently where she says, Jesus Christ cannot be the only way to God. Now, I need to say to our listeners, it is absolutely essential you listen to this series of broadcasts because we're going to be answering that question and answering it in such a way that if you're having a conversation with a neighbor and they say that, we are going to teach you how to answer that question. But as a result of that, you see, what she is really trying to say is that we should broaden the whole business of spirituality. There are many ways to God. Now, that, Oprah has had many guests, and she does, uh, we're just picking out four, but the reason we're picking out these four is she's had these people on multiple times, and she has promoted their books, and their books, as a result of her influence, have all become not just bestsellers, but I mean have sold millions of copies of books, all right? One of them is a fellow by the name of Eckhart Tolle, and he's got a book, A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. Who is this person, and what is this book about? Eckhart Tolle comes from Germany, and at the age of 15 already, as a young person, he was contemplating suicide because life seemed to be so uh, meaningless to him. But at the age of 29, by the way, as a teenager, he was introduced to some occult literature, some mystical books. At the age of 29, he has a conversion experience. And uh, we're going to be talking about conversion later, but let me just simply introduce it by saying he began to realize that there was two of him, so to speak. On the one hand, he had his thoughts, which were the problem, his ego. But he began to discover that if he went within himself, he says it was as if he was being sucked into a dark hole, as he went within himself, he then discovered that there was this parallel universe where there was peace and happiness and uh, all of these other things he was seeking for. So that's his conversion experience. And as a result of that, he began to write, he began to teach. Oprah gets a hold of him, and she says now, that he is her guru, and uh, she has those ha-ha moments. Finally, I understand. And so Eckhart Tolle is one of the ones that we're going to be dealing with on this program. Very, very important. And once we understand what he is teaching, it's going to help us also to understand the other guests. Yeah, I like your illustration. He was talking about, he heard a voice, by the way, when he was searching for this other reality. And uh, you've got this illustration. It's like watching Channel 5 on your TV set, and all of a sudden you're seeing one program over there, one reality, and you turn over to Channel 10, and the fact is you see another program, another reality. He's saying, you know, every one of us, we're, in, we're stuck over here on Channel 5, and what we need to do is we need to find this other channel. Because if you do, there's a whole new program. There's a whole new consciousness. And in the process, that conversion experience that we're going to talk about, he heard this voice. And that voice said, let go of all of this stuff, and, and this is what you need. And, and also, he, resist nothing. Resist nothing. In other words, passivity. And later on, we're going to be talking about how that for him, good and evil are illusionary. In other words, it's much like Hinduism, where you are going into yourself. And remember that when you discover this consciousness, you discover God. God is the essence of your consciousness. And we're going to talk about the conception of God in the next program. All right, we're going to take a break. We we'll come back, but I want before we take the break, I want to share what Oprah said about Eckhart Tolle. Okay, and we want to put this up on the screen. She said, "Being able to share Eckhart Tolle's material with you is a gift, and a part of the fulfillment of my life's purpose. It was an awakening for me, so she experienced this, and I want that for you too." So this is why we're talking about it. We're critiquing not just Eckhart Tolle, but a whole host of guests that have had similar experiences, have a similar worldview that is directly contradicted by what God is saying in the Bible. Regardless of the words that they're using about Jesus and God and all of this kind of stuff, they don't mean the same thing. And that's what we're trying to unscramble for people that are listening. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to look at the second book, which is... The Secret.
by Rhonda Byrne. If you've been to the bookstore, you've seen this. It's in all the bookstores, another bestseller, and a guest on Oprah's program. Stick with us. We'll talk about this when we come right back. If you would like to have all of the information in our new series, The False Gospel of Oprah and Her Friends, all six television programs are available on DVD for a gift of $59. And you may order these programs now by calling us at 1-800-805-3030. All right, we're back. We're talking about uh, Oprah Winfrey and her friends. We're critiquing some of the information she is presenting about God and spiritual things, and we're critiquing some of the friends, the guests that she has on her program. Because of her great influence, uh, when she promotes some of these people in their books, their books become bestsellers. What's, what are, what's in those books? One of the books is The Secret by a guest by the name of Rhonda Byrne. And uh, what we have here, Erwin, is we have another guest that is talking about this new spirituality, and she's talking about the law of attraction. Tell me a little bit about her. Well, Rhonda Byrne was Australian-born, and she went through a very difficult period in her life, and she also had a form of conversion experience. And as a result, she uncovered the great secret. The great secret is the law of attraction. That is to say, everything that happens in my life, I attract. And uh, in fact, she says that if you're struggling with uh, being overweight, it is not because of what you eat, it's because of your thoughts. She says the universe is like a catalog. It is just like a catalog waiting for you to order. And whatever you think is going to come to you. It's hard to talk about this without smiling because uh, this is really a great exercise in self-worship. Would it be okay if I just read a quote or two? Sure. Just so that people began to understand. She says, you are God in a physical body. I need to pause here and to tell our audience that this underlies all of this New Age thinking, that we actually are God. It's the oldest lie that goes right back to the book of Genesis. You are God in a physical body. You are spirit in the flesh. You are eternal life expressing itself as you. You are a cosmic being. You are all powerful. You are all wisdom. And now listen to this. <laughs> the earth turns on its orbit for you. The oceans ebb and flow for you. The birds sing for you. The sun rises and sets for you. The stars come out for you. None of it can exist without you, no matter who you thought you were. Now you know the truth of who you really are. You are the master of the universe. You are the heir of the kingdom. One time I was on a talk show and someone said, I have a friend who's reading Rhonda Byrne's book entitled The Secret. Can you give me any scripture to contradict it? <laughs> I had to laugh because I said every chapter of the Bible contradicts it. What we really have here is narcissism gone wild. Narcissism on steroids. Yeah. What you have is self-worship. Man takes the place of God. I am God. Just like Satan said in the Garden of Eden, you shall be like God. And that's really the heart of the kind of spirituality we're speaking about. Yeah, people have to realize that when she says, you're the master of the universe, that she's talking about the person. When you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth and you look in the mirror, when you see that person, that's the master of the universe. That's who the birds are singing for. That's why everything is happening that's going on, and you control it by the law of attraction, which we're going to talk about more. But let's move on to a couple of her other guests. You've got Marianne Williamson. A return to love, and she basically is touting A Course in Miracles, with which Oprah also is touting. In fact, she's on XM Radio teaching this class, uh, promoted by Oprah. Now, what in the world is in this book? which is a great sounding title, A Return to Love. I mean, what's the matter with that? 
This is very important. I hope that everyone who is listening listens with great care and understanding at this point. Because we're talking about something huge. We're talking about a deception of mega proportions. There was a woman by the name of Helen Shookman who wrote a book entitled The Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles is a long, ponderous book. I've spent hours in it, and it is thoroughly blasphemous. It was written by automatic writing. A spirit came along and just told her what to write, and it bypassed her consciousness as such. This is very popular in occult circles. So what you have is A Course in Miracles that belittles the atonement, that belittles Christ, it is a terrible book, a demonic book, really. Now, Marianne Williamson, Helen Shookman, by the way, is deceased. Marianne Williamson comes along and studies the book.